setting up the working environment. Why did I create this video? Well, in all my courses, I show the examples running under an Ubuntu system. Uh, which specific version do I use? I use Ubuntu 20.04. So if you also use Ubuntu, uh, there's no problem. Or if you use another uh, Linux distribution. But perhaps you say, oh no, I use Windows or use the Macintosh operating system, OS 10. But then don't worry, this video shows you how to set up a so-called virtual PC which runs on top of your normal operating system, so Windows or OS 10, using a virtualization software called VirtualBox. Virtualization software. What's this? What's that? Uh, let me draw a small sketch to explain the basic idea of virtualization software. So your normal computer, uh, your notebook, or your desktop PC, it provides some hardware. And on top of this hardware, there is a piece of software which is called an operating system. So this is your Windows 10 or your um, OS 10 operating system. In the context of virtualization software, this operating system has the name host operating system. On top of this operating system then comes the virtualization software which in our case is VirtualBox. However there are also other uh, possibilities. You can for example use um, VMware here I suggest to use VirtualBox because it's free. On top of this virtualization software, you can generate virtual PCs. You can generate different virtual PCs. For example, a virtual PC one. So basically, this is a um, virtual computer which is simulated by the virtualization software. You can create many of them Virtual PC 1, Virtual PC 2, up to Virtual PC N. And on top of these Virtual PCs, you can run, uh, you can install and run an operating system, which is then called in the context of virtualization software, a guest operating system. So the guest operating system runs on top of a virtual computer, which is simulated by a virtualization software, which runs on top of the host operating system. Okay, now I will show you all the steps that are needed to set up the software, this uh, VirtualBox software, and to set up a virtual PC. Um, this, these are four steps. The first step is to download and install the virtualization software VirtualBox. Then we will also download Ubuntu, this operating system which we want to install into this VirtualBox. We will then start VirtualBox and create a virtual PC and then we will install Ubuntu in that virtual PC we just created. Okay, let's start with the first step. Go into your browser and search for the VirtualBox software. The first links probably um, will be the right link it's uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox. Why Oracle? Because now VirtualBox is developed by Oracle. So click on this link and you will see the VirtualBox homepage. You can see that the current version of VirtualBox is 6.1. Go to Downloads and then you will come to the download page where you have to choose your platform. So what is the Guest, uh, what is the host operating system you use? If it's Windows, click here, and you will, um, and the pop-up window will appear, uh, which allows you to download the installer for Windows. If you use Macintosh, 
the OS 10 operating system as your host operating system. You um, also will uh, see this pop-up window with a uh, disk image file for download. Uh, in my case, I already use Ubuntu, but I will also install this software here to show it to you. Um, I have to click on Linux, Linux distributions. Uh, another page will appear um, where you have to select your distribution. In my case, I use Ubuntu 20.04. Um, so I click on this link and I will get the possibility to download a Debian package. After downloading, after having downloaded this Debian package, just double click on it um, <clears throat> uh, in the file manager and VirtualBox will be installed. Okay, in my case, I have already installed VirtualBox and um, here comes a first pitfall because if you have installed it and then you go to the list of applications and you go to V as VirtualBox as we would expect it, um, we can see, oh, there is no VirtualBox installation. It seems to be that there is no installation um, keep in mind that it's developed by Oracle and the name is Oracle VM VirtualBox. Okay, so it's installed here and you can um, just click it and the Oracle Virtual uh, Machine VirtualBox software will open. So we have finished the first step. We have downloaded and installed VirtualBox. Now the next step is to download Ubuntu uh, because this may take some time. I suggest you use to do this at the second step because in the third step we want to create a virtual PC which takes some minutes but in uh, and so in the meantime Ubuntu can be downloaded. So for downloading Ubuntu we go back to our browser, open a new search window and just enter Ubuntu because the first link will bring you already to the Ubuntu download page. What we want to install in this virtual PC is the Ubuntu desktop version. So click on this first link here, Ubuntu desktop. And uh, it's um, the version 20.04.1 uh, is okay. That's exactly the version we want to download. Just click on download. And um, then another pop-up window should appear, uh, which allows you to download this ISO file. Say, save file. Now you can choose where to download this Ubuntu ISO file. This uh, contains all the stuff we need to install Ubuntu later after we will have installed a first or set up a first virtual PC. Okay, so click on save and um, save this file. Now go back to the VirtualBox software we just opened and you can see there are two buttons, new and add. What happens if we click on this button add? Um, the software VirtualBox tells us that we can select a virtual machine file, but we do not yet, do not have yet one. So this is if you already have created a virtual machine file before. What we want to do is to create a new one, so we click on new. Um, <clears throat> we have to um, enter some settings and we will be guided through this assistant, which helps us to um, adjust all the settings for creating a first virtual PC. First, we have to think about a name for the virtual PC. Let's call it like I did it in my sketch, virtual PC one. Then uh, the next question is where shall this virtual PC be stored? So there are some files associated with each, with each virtual PC and the, uh, the question is where in which folder. So um, I su suggest to uh, set up a folder, to create a folder where you store all your virtual PCs. So let's say other and then in the file manager choose a folder where you want to store all the 
virtual PCs. I will create a new one. 26 uh, virtual box machines. Great. Okay, we want to open this folder. So now um, <clears throat> VirtualBox, the VirtualBox software knows that this first virtual PC one shall be stored as a subfolder in this root folder 26 underscore VirtualBox underscore machines. We also have to enter which operating system which we intend to install in the future into this uh, virtual PC. And since we want to install Ubuntu, we choose Linux because Ubuntu is a Linux distribution. Uh, which version um, we want to install? Um, Linux uh, Ubuntu 64-bit. Okay, um, so go to the next page and at the next page we have to set up the memory size for the virtual PC um, that we want to use. On my system, I have a total of 32 gigabytes. So this is bar, these are about 31,000 megabytes. And some part of this physical memory can be used for this virtual PC. Um, how much do you want to use? The recommended memory size is, um, I would say the limit, the, the, the lower limit is at least uh, one gigabyte. And this is a little bit, um, a little bit small. I would suggest to use um, per, perhaps eight um, gigabyte. So these are eight thousand one hundred ninety-two megabytes. Okay, let's go to the next page. On this page, the VirtualBox software wants to know um, whether we uh, want to add already a virtual hard disk. So a virtual PC is also associated with a virtual hard disk. We can use an existing virtual hard disk file. We can choose to not add a virtual hard disk at this moment and we can add it later. And um, it's a good idea to use this um, pre-selected version, pre-selected option, create a virtual hard disk, no. Okay, create it. So then we uh, come to another page and um, there are different hard disk file types that can be used. So there's a proprietary um, file type for virtual hard disks, which is called virtual, bis virtual box disk image, VDI. But there are also other ty file types, uh, which have the advantage that you can use it with other virtualization software. I guess probably also you can also then use this virtual hard disks with artist files with, uh, for example, VMware. Um, let's use the first one, which is the pre-selected one, VDI, virtual box disk image. Okay. Now there we come to a, now we come to another page where we have to choose um, an, another important option, um, whether we want to use a dynamically allocated hard disk or where, whether we want to use a fixed size. Uh, a dynamically allocated hard disk file has the advantage that we can start with a very small um, hard disk file and we can let it grow as we need more space. Um, the disadvantage is that this takes um, more time. A fixed size um, <clears throat> can has the advantage that it's faster to use at the end, but it cannot grow. So I would suggest to use the pre-selected version as well, dynamically allocated. Okay. Now is the question, where, we want, where do we want to store this virtual hard disk file? You can see that below our root folder, which we have chosen to store the virtual box machines, uh, the virtual box software now has generated a first subfolder, virtual PC one. So it's exactly, the subfolder name is exactly the same name as we have chosen for the virtual PC. And um, there it wants to create a VDI file, this virtual disk image, virtual box disk image file. Now the question is, how large shall be this file? Uh, the system suggests to use 10 gigabytes. 
and I would say this is a fairly good um, pre-selected uh, um, option because um, the installation of Ubuntu it will take about seven to eight gigabytes so we have a little bit space left for installing other Ubuntu software uh, and um, for storing data within this virtual PC and uh, as you remember we have chosen to use the dynamically allocated version of the VDI file which means that the VDI file can also grow so um, we are open for even if we even need more space okay let's click create and there we are we have created our first virtual PC which is now powered off now we have already completed the first three steps of setting up a virtual PC. We have downloaded and installed VirtualBox. We have downloaded Ubuntu as an ISO file for installation, and we have created a virtual PC. The fourth and next step is now to install Ubuntu in that virtual PC. For doing this, go to the VirtualBox software and turn on your virtual PC. By the way, if you have generated, created, different virtual PCs, they will be listed here on the left of the software. We have only created one and uh, this one is already chosen is virtual PC one. It's now powered off and like a real physical PC, we have to turn it on. Let's turn it on by clicking this green arrow here. And um, the VirtualBox software, if you start a new created virtual PC for the first time it will recognize that there is not yet an optical that there's not yet an operating system installed and um, this pop-up window will appear and um, this allows us now to choose a virtual optical disk file it's like inserting a virtual disk in a virtual CD-ROM drive click this button and then say add and this is our virtual disk file uh, it's ISO it's this, this ISO file um, we choose this one and then we say choose and we say start and now it's like booting this virtual PC uh, with the help of a virtual CD-ROM drive um, with the help of this ISO file and this will in um, start Ubuntu as you can see Need some time and checks disks. Okay, checking finished. Now Ubuntu will be started. It's exactly the same uh, what will happen if you use a physical PC and start um, uh, Ubuntu, which is stored on a USB stick or on a CD ROM. And uh, what should happen is that we will. Should, uh, should be that the inst installation um, yes uh, um, option of Ubuntu shall be started. So we can try Ubuntu without installing it, but we want to directly install it. Uh, so we click the button install Ubuntu. And then we can uh, choose the keyboard layout. Well, um, I have a German keyboard layout German 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 uh, let's check it I can press some special letters that only exist in the German alphabet okay works continue so now um, I would suggest to use the normal installation of Ubuntu continue Everything else which we will need in the future can be installed afterwards. And now there comes a little bit um, scaring uh, message. Um, if we now choose this option and say install now, this will erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Warning, this will delete all your programs, documents, photos and so on. But not on our guest PC, but on the uh, virtual PC. But there is not anything installed on the virtual PC so we can click install now okay uh, the installation process of a Linux system it um, 
uh, means that there are some that some partitions will be uh, hard disk partitions will be created. Just say uh, continue. So now it asks where where I am. Well, I am located in Kempten in Bavaria in Germany. Okay, continue. And now um, we have to uh, enter our name. Okay. And while we enter our name, um, the Ubuntu installation process will make some suggestions for the computer's name and for our username. But I want another username. And I want another name for the virtual PC. Um, I call it virtual PC one in the virtual box software. And I want to uh, be named it as virtual PC one also within the Ubuntu system. Uh, a password. Okay. I will use my standard password, which is secret. Um, but I want the system to log in automatically. So if you start your virtual PC, um, I will not have to enter my uh, password because I want to start it uh, rapidly. No? Okay, log in automatically. So now the process of, of the installation of the Ubuntu system starts and it will take some minutes. Yeah? So it's now um, this time and let's see how long it takes. Here I'm back after installing Ubuntu. In my case, it took about 14 minutes to install Ubuntu. After the installation of Ubuntu, the Ubuntu installer will tell you that you have to restart the system. Now comes another pitfall after you have restarted the system. The system wants that you um, remove the uh, CD-ROM, the virtual CD-ROM, um, from the virtual PC in order to boot from the hard disk. And um, you can do so by choosing an option. Um, but um, in my case, it was not possible to choose it. Um, to choose it, it was only possible to choose it after I uh, saved the machine state. So um, I will show you. Um, I have now already powered off my virtual PC. I will start it again, and um, you can see that it already uses the hard disk drive where I have installed um, the. Um, <clears throat> where I've installed the Ubuntu system. So it will now boot from the hard disk, which takes some time as for a normal PC. And you can also see uh, um, from this icon that there's no virtual CD-ROM inserted. Can insert a virtual CD-ROM by going to devices, optical devices, and then we could choose again this ISO image file here. Yeah? So now I have inserted this um, ISO file and I can remove it. This is the option you have to choose if you restart or if you start your virtual PC for the first time in order to boot from the just installed um, hard disk. Yeah, so remove disk from virtual drive. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it says it's unable to eject the virtual optical disk, um, but I want to force this unmount. So there's now no virtual CD-ROM in there, in the virtual CD-ROM drive. Okay, so this is my virtual PC, and I just um, I already booted uh, Ubuntu for the first time. Now we have uh, completed this uh, next step, booting the virtual PC for the first time, where we had to um, uh, take out the virtual CD from the virtual CD-ROM. Now we can go to the next step, um, step number six, where I want to show you how to save the state of a virtual PC. So go for your, go to the virtual, uh, go to your virtual PC and go to file close then you will see three different options. The first option is to save the machine state. 
Um, if you choose this option, it will take some time, but it will store the machine state um, in a file and you can restart. If you restart the machine, you will start a restart exactly at this point with um, all the um, data in your memory of all the applications open as you um, stopped it when you said save. The next option is to send the shutdown signal. It's like turning the system off. And uh, the third option is to power off the machine. It's like plugging the plug um, so the uh, their machine does not have any energy yet. Okay, so we will say save the machine state and go to OK. And then you will say, see that will take some seconds because uh, now the data will be stored in the file. Now the data will be stored in the virtual PC files that are associated with this virtual PC one. As you have seen, um, all our virtual box machines will be stored in this root folder and we are now in the subfolder virtual PC one. And here there's the um, uh, virtual disk image file and um, saving the machine state into the virtual disk image file takes some time. Okay, so now the uh, virtual PC is saved and we can uh, restart it. Yeah, we can go to start and then we will continue exactly at this point where we, start, re, uh, where we save the machine state. Okay. We can also say file close and we can send the machine the shutdown signal. It's like turning it off uh, in the normal way, going to power off and power off, power off. So this will shut down the system and you can see, okay, it's powered off. Then if we want to restart it again, we go to start and this will initiate the normal booting procedure for the machine. So um, as you are as you are used to the normal booting process. So it takes some seconds um, also to boot this virtual PC and um, you will see the first um, welcome to Ubuntu um, page here. Now I want to talk about a last issue uh, which is setting up the display resolution. Let's go to your virtual PC and you can see that the resolution is not adjusted if you scale this window and the resolution is very low. For adjusting the resolution um, we can go to the settings you can click on activities and search for the settings settings and then you have to choose displays and there you can choose the resolution let's take a higher resolution for example this one here so this looks better now and I want to keep the changes so now I have also inside this virtual PC a larger um, or a finer created resolution. Okay, great. Now you have managed it to install an Ubuntu system into a virtual PC using the software VirtualBox. We will use this virtual PC in the following for all examples.